There's been a lot wrong with the last four years, but the separation of migrant children from their parents will go down as one of this administration's most appalling actions. New reporting from NBC's Julia Ainsley and Jacob Soboroff reveal the shocking details, uh, and it, the, it reports on its genesis. Sources paint a twisted picture of a White House meeting, saying that in 2018, senior Trump advisors held a hand vote to decide whether or not they wanted to separate migrant children from their parents. White House policy advisor Stephen Miller notably led the vote in a meeting that included then Attorney General Jeff Sessions, HHS Secretary Alex Azar, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Miller told those assembled that, quote, if we don't enforce this, it's the end of our country as we know it. Kirsten Nielsen, then Secretary of Homeland Security, voted against the policy, saying that the agency didn't have enough resources to separate children and return them to their parents in a timely manner. The White House and HHS deny that this vote ever took place. Nielsen still says there was never a policy to separate children crossing the border. Listen to what she said in July. So with the families, the, the truth is uh, there was no policy to separate families. Such a policy was requested of me. Uh, it was requested of General Kelly as well uh, when he was secretary. And we both just missed it out of hand. Uh, there was no direction to separate families who legally entered the United States. NBC News correspondent Jacob Soboroff joins me from Los Angeles. He's the author of the New York Times bestselling book, Separated, Inside an American Tragedy. And, and basically the premise for your book disappears if what the administration is saying is true, that uh, this kind of just happened. Uh, luck of the draw, everybody got separated, Jacob? It's not how it happened uh, at all, Allie. And I mean, first of all, let's talk about why this is important. You, you brought it up in your introduction. We're talking about what Physicians for Human Rights, the Nobel Peace Prize winning organization called a systematic campaign of torture. Torture was the word that they used. They said it met the United Nations definition of torture of over 5,400 children, uh, ultimately. The American Academy of Pediatrics says what the American government did was government sanctioned child abuse. And now we know, I did not know this at the time that I reported out my book. And there are many, many details that I had never heard before when I reported the book. Uh, that this, this meeting took place at this key point right before Kirsten Nielsen signed the policy, which she still denies to this day uh, was a policy. I, it's, a, it's a feat of verbal gymnastics, if you ask me. Um, and in fairness to her, she did not raise her hand in the White House Situation Room. And when we say it was a hands vote, it was a show of hands, raise your hand. Stephen Miller told everyone assembled in this room, and you said the invited participants included Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, Alex Azar from HHS. And these are officials, uh, maybe absent Azar, that we had not heard connected with the family separation policy before. Miller put this to a vote in saying, we're either doing this or we're not doing this. He was sick and tired of waiting. He didn't want to debate Kirsten Nielsen about the size, the scale, the scope, what ultimately would happen afterwards. But despite warnings that this could have negative consequences, obvious negative consequences, uh, the, cap the, the cabinet members uh, present put their hands up in a sea of hands, according to uh, our report. Uh, and of course, they move forward with this policy and the da disastrous consequences follow. Stephen Miller, uh, a strange character who has consistently throughout this administration yeah. uh, continued to hold sway over the president, very serious sway. Uh, and he seems obsessed with this issue of immigration, not just uh, illegal immigration from from uh, across the border. He just thinks immigration is bad generally. Yeah, and I think you know, what, what this story in particular hinges on is the degree to which they wanted to harm migrants. And if Stephen Miller's version of family separations would have played out, and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying any version of family separation was tolerable. You know this. I saw it with my own eyes. I found it. Um, it's almost, yep. every, I get the chills. I swear to you, every time I talk about uh, what I saw down there, the kids in the cages at the border. But Stephen Miller wanted to separate 25,000 more children than were separated in the two months alone under that zero tolerance period. If you would extrapolate that out to the end of 2018, we're talking about something like 100,000 children if they were to have separated every parent from their uh, child that arrived at the southwest border. Uh, Adam Serwer uh, wrote a very famous column for The Atlantic saying the cruelty is the point. And there is no other way to look at this or understand the motivations of officials in the Trump administration without that as the underlying motivation. And in the book, there are countless examples uh, of what can only be described as cruelty as a motivator. 
And, and when you talk about cruelty and you talk about the term torture that was used, think about the things that happened. Isolation, uh, deprivation of, of contact with others, deprivation of sleep, control over noise, of light, of when they could sleep, control over temperature. All of the things that we actually know that you use to torture people. Well, uh, let me give you one other example, Ali. Uh, the, the U.S. government right now is on the hook, responsible for paying for the medical uh, welfare, basically therapy sessions for families that were separated by the U.S. government. And so many of them are so terrified, a t only a tiny fraction have exercised their right uh, to get this uh, critical, valuable medical resource. And Juan and Jose, the father and son that I write about in my book, Separated Inside an American Tragedy, said to me when I was down on the border reporting for us uh, w when President Trump was in Yuma, maybe just a month or a month and a half ago, they said, if you see, Juan said this to me, I swear to God, if you see President Trump, ask him for me, why uh, did he separate all of us from each other? And why did they traumatize us uh, psychologically? It's something yeah. that they will grapple with for the rest of their lives. An official that was involved in the reunifications uh, told me it was the greatest human rights catastrophe of, of his lifetime working yep. domestically in the U.S. government. May it haunt those who made that decision for the rest of their lives. Jacob, thank you for your excellent reporting. Uh, Jacob Sobroff, NBC News correspondent, the author of the best-selling book, Separated, Inside an American Tragedy. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.